Servers on Minecraft Pocket Edition. In this video, we're going to show you how to make your very own Pocket Edition Minecraft server. However, I do want to say up front here that this is only going to be able to be possible if you have a Windows computer that you can host the server on. So that means you need a laptop or a PC, like a desktop style computer, to host this server on and have that computer running while you're playing on your server. That's going to be a server that can be joined from Pocket Edition on your phone, but again, in order for you to join it, you need to have your server on a computer. That is unless you start your server with Apex Minecraft hosting. You can check out Apex the first link down below with the breakdown of .xyz slash Apex and they're the sponsor of this video. At Apex, you can start a Bedrock Minecraft server with literally just a few clicks. You just select it and you're done. You have your server up and running. On top of that, they have 24 hours, seven day a week support should you have issues and it's super easy to add things like plugins and mods to your Minecraft Bedrock server in comparison to like uh, this server, which actually is very, very hard to add add-ons and can't have plugins on it at all. So all that being said, I did want to mention that up front that the easiest way to start a server under five minutes is with Apex and it can also be done from a mobile device. Just literally on your phone, in your browser, you can get your server up and running and you'll get an IP address and a port. You type that in to a Minecraft Pocket Edition and you're good to go. So if you want to start a server the easiest way possible, check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown to XYZ slash Apex. Nevertheless, though, what if you do want to start a server yourself on a Windows computer? Well, to do that, you want to go to the second link in the description down below. That's going to take you here. This is the download for the Bedrock dedicated server. Minecraft Bedrock Edition is the exact same thing as Minecraft Pocket Edition. So I will be using those terms interchangeably in this video. If you hear me say Bedrock, I mean Pocket Edition. If you hear me say Pocket Edition, I mean Bedrock. They are the exact same thing. With that being said, we are going to be downloading the Bedrock dedicated server because that's what's going to allow you to have a Pocket Edition server. We're specifically going to be downloading this for Windows. So as you can see on the left hand side, we have the Windows version. Click the I agree if you agree to the ULA, which we do, and then click download. And then download the bottom left right like so. We can minimize our browser here and we want to go ahead and move these files to our desktop. They're going to be found in our downloads folder. So click the little windows icon, top left of my screen, bottom of your screen or bottom center of your screen on Windows 11. Type in downloads, you have this downloads file folder here. And in here you have the Bedrock server. Drag this to your desktop for ease of use. Once this is on your desktop, go ahead and right click on it and click extract all. Click extract again on this menu. And now all of the files and folders are going to be extracted into a folder on your desktop. You can see in the top left of our screen, there it is. This is going to take a minute or so to do, so I'm just going to do a quick jump cut and we'll pick up hopefully right before or right as it finishes. So the extraction is now finishing up and as soon as it finishes, it will close out of that and we have this folder on our desktop in addition to the file we downloaded, the zip file here. We want to delete that. All we need is the folder. Now when we open this up, this is actually all the files you need to start your Bedrock server. For example, the server properties is here. And by the way, if you double click on these and you need to select a program, just select Notepad. And this is where you can do things like change your server name. As you can see by the it's dedicated server, but you could change this to the breakdown server, for example, if we wanted to, right? The breakdown server, right? Same thing for game mode. You want to change it to created by default. You can do that. So much stuff in here can be edited and it's all very, very well documented, which is really cool as well. Nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and file, save that. You probably won't need to change anything in server.properties at first, maybe later. It's worth checking out, but at first you really don't need to. What you do need to do though, is go ahead and double click on the bedrock underscore server.exe. When you do this, your server is going to start and it's going to get fired up. Up, boom, it's, it's, it's done. It's actually very, very quick to start a Bedrock Edition server. It's kind of impressive. It is started at this point. As you can see, server started. That means it's working. It's running. Great stuff. Now, only you can join your server from the computer that you're running your server on right now. How do you do this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you, but just know that you need to port forward in order for your friends to join this server. Right now, we're just testing to make sure you can join it because if you can't join it, the chances of your friends being able to join it are relatively low. To do this though, we want to click the little windows icon. Again, top left of my screen, bottom of your screen, bottom center of your screen on Windows 11. Type in CMD and then in command prompt here, open it up and type IPCONFIG, IP config exactly like that and hit enter. We get a bunch of data in here. All we need is this right here, our IPv4 address, 192.168.1.15. I'm just gonna leave this screen open as we open up Minecraft Bedrock. Again, this only works on the Windows 10 edition and if the server is hosted on the same computer that you're running Minecraft Windows 10 or 11 edition on. If you wanna play on your phone, you can, but you'll need to port forward in order for that to work reliably. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and once we're here, click on play. Then we wanna click on servers and scroll all the way down to the bottom and click add server. Then we can name this whatever we want. I'm just gonna name it our server. And then we can go ahead and change the server address. This is going to be your IPv4 address over here. So 192. 
1.168.1.15. Again, you're the only person that can join your server this way. If we click save, we'll see that the server current ping says it's zero. Don't worry about that. If you click join server, it is going to work. As you can see, boom, locating server, generating world. It is working. If we come over here, we'll see that we have it joined into it. If, it's, if it'll move. There we go. Player connected daily videos. Right there it is. So we're in this server and we'll actually uh, maybe break some blocks here or something. That way you know later on when we rejoin this, like how your friends will join it from our mobile device, this is, uh, this is the same server, right? We're not playing any trickery. So there you go. This server is working for you. How do you get your friends to be able to join this server? Well, it's going to be done via your port forwarding. I also want to mention that you don't need a port forward for an Apex server. So if you want to get a server... Without port forwarding, check out Apex. There's so many benefits. Additionally, this server is only meant for your friends. It's not meant to be public because, well, a public server needs extra security. Anyone who gets this IP address can find out where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates as well as DDoS you and take your internet offline. That's why an Apex server is so amazing. It can be public. It can be private. It is up to you. Nevertheless, let's stop this server. To do that, you want to go ahead and type stop right like so. Oh, not top. Excuse me. I Stop is what you should type. S-T-O-P. And then we can go ahead and get some numbers from command prompt and our IP config. Now, again, if you didn't open this, just open up command prompt by clicking the Windows icon, typing CMD and opening command prompt, and then type IP C-O-N-F-I-G. That'll then give us all these numbers. Specifically here, what we want to do is open notepad and copy a few things over. We need our IPv4 address, which we've already used, but we'll grab it again, IPv4. And then we need the default gateway. So default, if I can spell correctly gateway. There we go. And then we want to go ahead and copy these. So default gateway is 192.168.1.1. Yours may be the same or completely different. Either one is fine. Then for our IPv4 address, same thing. It could be completely different or the same. Mine is 192.168.1.15. We can now go ahead and close out a command prompt. These are the only numbers we need. Now let's go ahead and open up our browser and open up a brand new tab. Now in this brand new tab, we want to go ahead and enter in our default gateway, which for me is 192.168.1.1. Paste that in there and hit enter. I then have a login box that pops in from the bottom. You may have a completely different sort of login box. It might be in a nice GUI, but you'll probably have some sort of login. What do you enter in here? Well, it's going to be your router's username and password, which if you don't have it, and most people unfortunately don't, we have an in-depth guide here on how to get it. This goes over everything you need to know on how to find your router's password. It goes over everything. Step one, step two, all these different methods, all of that stuff can be used to find it. And most people do find it by method three here, if not method four. Most people don't have to contact their ISP, fortunately. Once you've got your router's username and password, though, come back here and enter it in right here. Boom, you'll be good to go. Click sign in, all of that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So when I log into my router, this is what it looks like. For you, it's probably completely different, but that's okay. What you're looking for is port forwarding. Now, we do have a guide in the description down below on how to port forward on any router, and it goes through all the different routers and basically popular routers out there and how to port forward on them. It's worth watching through it in depth, in my opinion, because even if your specific router isn't on that video, it's going to show you a lot of routers and yours is probably similar to one of the routers on that list. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and port forward on my router. Now for me, it is an advanced. For you, it could be an advanced and then advanced again. It could be an IP forwarding. It could be an apps in gaming. It could be in port forwarding. It could be a NAT forwarding, N-A-T forwarding. It could be in advanced administration. It could be an advanced admin. There's so many different places that this could be, but just click around your router and only save something when you are confident you're doing a port forward and you'll never have any issues. It could also be in the security tab, by the way. That's one I forgot to mention. For me, though, it is an advanced and then it is in port forwarding slash port triggering. Now, I have a Java port forward here. I'll go ahead and delete that. Now, for some people, you may have a big list, just a big empty boxes everywhere on this page. And if so, just do the first one and then save it, right? However, you may also have to add a port forward or in my case, add a custom service. Either of those are fine. As long as it's port forwarding and you're adding it there, you're good. Now for the service name, I'm going to name this Minecraft Bedrock. For you, this could just be name or ID. Either one is fine. It's just identifying what the port forward is for. For the protocol, it's going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. Could be either of those, right? Meaning it could literally be the word both, or it could be TCP and UDP together. However, if you can't do both for whatever reason, do this twice. Do it once for TCP and once for UDP. We can though, so that's what we're going to select. For our external port, for anything involving the word port, we are going to enter in 19132. Anything involving the word port is going to have 19132 as the port. So external port, inside port, outside port, first port, second port, doesn't matter. If it has the word port, 
at all enter in 19132 so there we go external port and internal port automatically updated for me you may have to enter it twice but that's okay for our internal ip address this is going to be the ipv4 address we got earlier in my case 192.168.1.15 yours could be different than that though you may also have a big drop down box and in that case you want to select the windows computer that you're starting this server on you want to go ahead and click apply and unfortunately we have to port forward again so we need to go ahead and add another custom service here or add another port forward once you've done that you want to do the same thing this is going to be minecraft bedrock 2 right and then for the protocol it's going to be the same as well tcp slash udp udp slash tcp or both the thing that's going to be different is the port this time you want to enter in 19133. So once you want to enter in 19132, and then the next time you want to enter in 19133. Both ports need to be forwarded for a Bedrock server to work perfectly. So as you can see here, we want to do internal port range. All that stuff is left the same as it was before. Even the internal IP address or the device is going to be the same. So 192.168.1.15 or select your device from the drop-down box. Like mine's right there. Then go ahead and apply, save, do whatever you have to do to save the changes, and you should be good to go. At this point, though, how do your friends actually join this server? Well, they're going to be joining using your public IP address, which we can find right here. In the description down below, there's a link to what's my IP address, and it takes you here. This is where you can see right here your IP address, but you can also see why it's very, very important to host your server with Apex if it's going to be public. You can see the region, city, latitude, and longitude coordinates that can be grabbed from your IP. Obviously, there's a lot of like black boxes or whiting out on the screen right now. For me, you can only see that it's in the US, and you can only see the last three digits, 177 of the IP address. Nevertheless, we want to go ahead and make note of this and minimize our browser because we want to start this server, right? So to do that, go ahead and double click on the bedrockserver.exe, and at this point, we can actually jump over to our phone and get this server added. Yes, we're going to join this server from Pocket Edition because guess what? That's what this video is all about. It would be disingenuous if it wasn't for Pocket Edition. Nevertheless, we are now on my phone. Let's go ahead and start the recording and jump on over to our phone. So here we are on Minecraft on our phone. We go ahead and click play and then we're going to go over to servers. Now I think, uh, yeah, I have a dead server here. Let's go ahead and remove that or not a dead server, but just a non-server for this video. What we want to do is go over to servers and then scroll all the way down and click add server. Then you can name the server you want. I'm just going to name it a local server. So a local server. It's not really a local server, but that's just what I'm naming it. Now for our IP address here, what we're going to do is enter in our public IP that we had earlier. Now during this time, we're actually going to just kind of block the screen out. And once we have the IP entered, you'll see the last three digits. And at the end, 0.177. Now, all you'll be able to see is 0.177 because that's the same as it was over on the website when we were on desktop. And now at this point, we can go ahead and click save. Now our server is going to be saved and we can go ahead and click this and join server. Don't be alarmed if it doesn't say anything there. It's going to work. It's going to join us on into the server and we can actually see this back on desktop. Daily videos is connected. Now, obviously, this is the exact same account that I had uh, before, right? So everything is working. And by the way, I have X-Ray installed our x-ray pack if you want to use it you can use it on your own server with no repercussions which is what's great about your own server but that's why uh, this looks weird here but nevertheless that is how you can get minecraft pocket edition servers up and running quickly and easily i do want to mention one more thing though let's jump back over to the pc and by the way your friends will join using that public ip address as well you can see i locked my phone and i disconnected however what we want to do right is show you how to fix some issues. Right here is Bedrock Server How To. If you double click on this, it's going to open up in your browser, right like so. Now, here is where you can get some information. Specifically, if you're having some issues joining the server from the computer you started the server on, this could be why, right? This could be why this issue is here. It also goes through all the configuration, folders, everything you need to know. It's very, very in-depth and worth, worth reading over. And I'm so glad they include that with Bedrock Server. I wish they would include it with Java as well. But nevertheless, that is something I wanted to mention. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more incredible content. And remember, if you want to stop your server, always type STOP and hit enter. Stop it that way. Otherwise, it can cause some issues. Nevertheless, my name is Nick. This is Meltdown. We'll see you in the next video. Enjoy your Pocket Edition server, and I'm out. Peace.